So I'll, I'll try to make this quick. As uh, Henry VIII said to his wives, don't worry, I won't keep you long. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, my style is, uh, since you can read much faster than listen, you can listen faster than most people speak, I will, and since spare mental cycles tend to lead to multitasking, uh, and which leads to lower retention, I will try to use these spare cycles up and uh, rely on the Doppler effect, which is the tendency of stupid ideas to seem smarter when they come at you rapidly. So I'm a venture capitalist, and I've invested half a billion dollars in venture capital for the past 30 years, and over 80 companies and over 60 venture capital funds. I'm not a lawyer, but I've kept many well-fed, and I am an inventor, a co-inventor, and over 13 patents and I have no interest in any troll, PAE, nor entity behaving as such. But my expertise is how VCs consider what to invest in, the role the patents play in that, how patents affect the success of small companies. Um, they don't matter much to software and internet companies, but they do to most others. The NVCA, National Venture Capital Association Board, had software and internet types who didn't like patents. And so for many years, the NVCA was mild in its criticism of prior bills. Not this time. Thank you, Robert. I'm no fan of uh, PAEs. I was a chairman of two companies until April when I sold them, and in the past three years, both have gotten a total of three troll suits. I've uh, fought all three and one. The average cost per suit was $100,000. And uh, despite the experience, the pending bills would be more harmful than helpful, I think, to the uh, entrepreneurial community. Uh, and it would make it harder to fund startups uh, um, that need patents because it makes them harder to succeed. And much of PAE activity is just and fair, in my opinion. Not all startups need patents. Uh, we, I talked about this already. Uh, but patents are needed for the innovations that are easy to copy once the pioneer has shown the way. For example, med <laughs> medical devices and biotech, e energy and clean tech, Internet of Things, semiconductors, electronics, optics, etc. Uh, and most tangible things and other miscellaneous and yet to be invented things. So some industries are net defendants. Uh, they, they defend more than they are plaintiffs. They don't use patents to achieve market power. Software and internet companies, like Google, Oracle, Salesforce, who, by the way, dominate the congressional hearings, S uh, Cisco, uh, Intel have patents, but the market power comes from huge economies of scale. And banks who, well, big consumer electronics companies, uh, restaurants, retailers, cable and telephone companies, et cetera. So um, there's, they have formed an unholy alliance to fix the troll problem. They, they parade poor, innocent victims of trolling, which are usually small entities, which fools Congress into sympathizing. The victims are not the ones paying the over $1 billion to lobby this issue over the past decade. Uh, trolls are the necessary boogeyman to trick Congress. And so objectification is, and loss of rationality is important here. And so they, of course, have lots of cartoon patent trolls. I'm wondering now, who's paying all these artists to come up with all this? Um, and, so this is small sampling. Um, this is from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And um, interestingly, Stanford had a conference co-sponsored by Stanford and Samsung Electronics. This was their troll thing. The title of the conference was Patent Trolls and Patent Reform. And here we have a troll squashing the innovation. Interestingly, John Hennessy, Stanford's president, is on the board, uh, boards of Cisco and Google. Coincidence? Perhaps. And there's, a, of course, a publicity campaign. Uh, people in Shrek costumes handing out flyers outside of Union Square Station in D.C., posters on the wall of National Airport. Uh, you can be sure that these were not paid for by the small, innocent victims of trolls that are paraded in front of Congress. This has been willfully blown way out of proportion. Litigation is the wrong measure of not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything that can be counted counts. That's from Albert Einstein. And uh, what's most important about the patent system is inducing the right behavior without litigation. Entrepreneurs and investors take the startup risks. This is what you want to encourage. You want incumbents to buy innovators and not copy them. The right behaviors don't show up in the statistics, and uh, lawsuits are the tip of the iceberg, but the behavior that we seek is below the waterline. So the, uh, the disrespect for patents is growing. There's unabashed copying, more unabashed copying than, than in the past. Another great quotation, when people are free to do as they please, they usually imitate each other. Large companies are ignoring innovators more. This is uh, partly as a result of growing difficulty in enforcement uh, because of better in chance of a defendant winning or many new ways to delay getting a result. And infringers are emboldened by the constant chipping away at the probability of plaintiff success. Um, the SCOTUS is as well. And the contemplated bills will worsen this. So these bills have been, are written by lobbyists and staffers. Um, so staffers are dilettantes without uh, the time or expertise to get this right. I mean, they, it's, a really, it's impossible for them to have the expertise in this and also the Iran deal, yada, yada, yada. I mean, they, there's just too much on their plate. And uh, legislators themselves are even less equipped to deal with this. They're out raising money half the time. And 
and provisions are snuck in that few even realize. So for only recently did we find the an innocuous line in the Innovation Act, an amendment in Section 273, Title 35 of the United States Code is amended to striking subsection F. That means it will protect a guilty infringer who is using an unreasonable defense from the possibility of a fee reversal. Hmm. Interesting. So it, it makes it easier to assert false claims of prior use without penalty. This is the wrong way to make sausage. By comparison, the 1952 Patent Act, which was written by two experts over four years, and patent judge Giles Rich and Pascal Federico, the chief examiner of the PTO, they, they had no vested interests or conflicts. They passed both houses without debate. They, uh, they deferred to the experts. It was simple and clear. 35 pages and led to huge success and flowering of innovation in our country. In 2011, the America Invents Act it was written by lobbyists and staffers, non-experts. It was long, complicated, and ambiguous and contradictory and excluded the interests of startups. And the current bills are more of that. I, we actually already touched on the ambiguity leading to lawsuits, and so I will uh, whiz through that other than to mention in Section 102, there are a number of un- undefined terms that are introduced, which will have to get litigated and to be resolved over time, now that more uncertainty. Attempts to fix problems from the AA will probably make it worse, since most problems begin as solutions. This is a quotation from Eric Severide. The AAA was, of course, an attempt to uh, be a solution to prior problems. So one has to think about the allocation of injustice. So after a lot of thought, nobody has come up with a perfectly just patent system, and I can't conceive of one. And so then the question becomes, uh, to whom should the injustice be allocated? Uh, My answer to that is it should be allocated away from that precious, fragile, and valuable thing we have in America, the startup ecosystem. So um, this is an ISO injustice curve. So this is um, on one axis is the injustice allocated to the defendant, and the other is the injustice allocated to the plaintiff. And the Innovation Act's effects would tend to shift injustice from the defendant to the plaintiff. In other words, more injustice for the inventor. I think what we should seek to do is to have less total injustice and move off of the curve. But I don't think that's what the proposed bill does. An international perspective, it's bizarre to me how we don't look around the world to see what uh, the error is elsewhere. So in all other countries, they have weak patent regimes, which is partly responsible for the private sectors not investing that much in VC, particularly not in areas that are, uh, you know, other than uh, software and so forth, which don't really rely so much on patents. And, uh, and so, the, uh, um, so their governments then, therefore, then try to do venture capital with very bad results. And we are making our IP, our IP system more like theirs. That was an actual, an intentional aspect of the American Vents Act was to try to harmonize with other countries, and they, meanwhile, they should have been harmonizing with ours. So it's bass awkward. So none of our policy dialogue is informed by looking at other countries' mistakes or successes. So my, in conclusion, these bills will be destructive of the patent dependent our startup ecosystem in venture capital America. More than 10% of our GDP comes from venture capital-backed companies. If enacted together with the AAA, it'll take at least 20 years to, for the effects to play out. And by then, you're likely to have been in a hospital room with someone you love, wishing that someone had invented the cure that he or she needs. Thank you.